Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So uh, I'm going to try to solve all of the questions in the data structures playlist or kind of module over here. So starting off with the first question, which is contains duplicates. So let's take a look at that question. Okay, so in this question, we're going to be given an integer array called nums. And our goal is to return true if any value appears at least twice in the array. So if there's any sort of repetition, we're going to return true. But if there is no repetition and every element is distinct, we're going to return false. So a quick example is one, two, three, one. The number one is repeated twice, so we return true. Uh, another example is one, two, three, four. Over here, everything is uh, unique and distinct. So in this case, we return false, right? So one very important thing to note, which is uh, important for this question that I uh, recognized earlier is that this, uh, the fact that these numbers don't have to be sorted. So for example, we have ones here and then there's a two at the ending after three and four. So the numbers are not sorted. And yeah, so uh, the range of the numbers is from negative 10 to the power of nine all the way to 10 to the power of nine. And we can also have some really big numbers. So the length could be up to 10 to the power of five. Okay, so let's first think of a very brute for solution. So what we could do is we could basically have two for loops. Uh, so what we could do is we would first iterate to the first number, so one. And then what we would do is we would check if there's any one anywhere else, right? So we would go to the next number and see if it's equal to the first number. And then we go to the next, so three. So three is not equal to one. But in this case, we have one and one. There's a match. So that means that there is a repetition. So we're going to return true. Okay, but just for the sake of it, let's say we keep going on. So now we're going to move on to the next number, which is two. So now we go into two and now we check two with three and then two with one. So basically all we're doing is we're comparing the two numbers each and every time. Okay. And if there is a, ma a match, we're going to return true, but this is not the best solution. And this is going to give us a time limit exceeded error, especially for really big numbers like 10 to the power of five. Cool. So uh, that is the first solution. And this is going to be big O of n squared time complexity. And the space complexity of this is going to be big O of 1 because we're not using any extra space. So now let's move on to a second solution. So a second solution that we could use is by using a set. So what we could do is we could use our set to keep track of all the numbers that are coming in. And each number we go to, we're actually going to go to the set and check if that number exists. Now, if the number already exists, well, that means that there's a repetition and we're going to return true. And uh, the lookup type for a, a set is going to be big O of one, but this is going to take extra um, uh, space. So in the worst case, we might have to give out big O of n space. And worst case, assuming there's no repetition, will be big O of n times. So for this solution, we're going to have a set called S for example, and now we iterate through each of the numbers and we check if s in, uh, sorry, if, sorry, sorry, if num in s, we're checking if uh, the number is in our set. Now, if it is in it, then that means there is a problem and we, uh, there is a repetition, so we're going to end up returning true. But if there isn't, we're going to add this number, so s dot add, we're going to add the number to the set. Now, if we iterate through all of the numbers and we don't actually end up returning anything, that means there is no repetition and we return false. So this is one of the solutions. So let's submit it. And this uh, solution was accepted. So now let's take a look at another solution finally. So in this case, we use big O of n time and big O of n space. Now let's try to come up with a solution which does not, which use, uh, uses big O of n time but does not take up extra space. So to do that, a simple solution would just be to sort the numbers. So we could get all of these numbers sorted. And what we could do is, let's say there's any repetition, right? So uh, let's just take a look at this over here. So we have one, two, three, and one. So after sorting it, what would happen is we would get one comma one comma two comma three. So what we could do now is we could actually compare each number with the number to the right of it. So we could go uh, to the zeroth index and compare it with the number at the first index. Now, if they were, uh, okay, so if they are the same, that means there is a repetition, obviously, and we return true. And this works because when you sort them, all the ones, if there's several, they're all going to be in the same space. So this technique is going to work. So let's see how this looks like in code. So first we had to sort the numbers, so nums.sort. 
And now what we can do is we iterate through the numbers. So let's uh, do it by index. So for index in range. So let's start off from the zeroth index and let's go up to the last but one index. So length of nums minus one. So what we're going to do is we're com going to compare. So uh, the value at index with the value at the index to the right of it. So that's going to be nums index plus one. Okay. So we compare these. So if and now if this condition here is true, well, that means there is a repetition and we're going to return true. But if we go through the entire for loop without returning true, that means there are no repetitions. And in this case, we return false. So this over here is going to take big O of n time and it's not going to take any extra space. So yeah, that should be our solution. And thanks a lot for watching this.